differential length, area, and volume. So we will talk about differential length, area, and volumes in all three of the coordinate systems that we've been discussing so far, Cartesian, cylindrical, and spherical. We need these anytime we are doing integrations. If we're following along some kind of path, we'll be using the differential length. If we're integrating over a surface, we will use the differential surfaces. And of course, if we're integrating over a volume, we will use the differential volumes. So it's very important to understand these things. I won't spend too much time on this slide. This is a summary of everything we're going to talk about in this video. And so you can come back to the PDF and have access to this, but it's a summary of the differential length, area and volume for each of the three coordinate systems. Let's move on. Cartesian coordinates. We start by drawing our Cartesian coordinates and putting a little tiny differential volume somewhere in space. And it's from this that we will define the three different differential lengths, the three different differential surfaces, and then the differential volume, all defined here. Here we're showing the first differential length, and this is the length of our differential volume in the X direction. And differential length is a vector quantity. It has a magnitude and a direction the magnitude of the differential length will be dx, differential dx. And in the direction, we use the unit vector in the x direction. And we can see that's right along the edge of our differential volume in the x direction. Next, we move on to the differential length in the y direction. Again, the differential length is a vector and it has a magnitude and direction. The magnitude is our differential dy and the direction is our unit vector in the y direction. Last, we have the differential length in the z direction. It's also a vector. It has a magnitude and direction. The magnitude is the differential dz and the direction is the unit vector in the z direction. So here in one picture is all three of our differential lengths. We now move on to our differential areas. And here we're highlighting one area on our differential volume. And so differential area is also a vector quantity. It has a magnitude and a direction. The magnitude of our differential area is the area of this side of our differential surface. And the direction is a in the direction perpendicular to that surface. So what is the area of this side of our differential volume? Well, we have this length is dy and this length is dz. So the area is dy times dz. And the direction perpendicular to that is the x direction. So we have this unit vector ax. So this is our differential surface area for this face of our differential volume. We now move on to the next face of our differential volume. And so the area is this length dx times the, this length, which is dz. So the area of this differential surface is dx times dz, and it's in a direction parallel to the y-axis, so its direction is unit vector ay. And the last differential surface is on the top surface of the differential volume. This length is dx. This other length is dy. So the area is dx times dy. And the direction perpendicular to that is in the z direction. And that's exactly what our differential surface is, dx dy times unit vector az. So in one picture here, we have all three of our differential areas defined around that differential volume. So we end then with a differential volume. Since we live in a three-dimensional world, there's not really a vector differential volume. If we were doing four-dimensional problems, there definitely would be a direction associated with this differential volume. 
but we can't even picture that in our mind. So for us, differential volume is only, always a scalar quantity, and we've been looking at this volume. So the volume of that little cube there is dx times dy times dz. And so we call that dv our differential volume. Cylindrical coordinates. We're going to do everything we just did in Cartesian coordinates for cylindrical coordinates. So we're drawing our cylindrical coordinate system here we define a differential volume in our cylindrical coordinates. And it's from this that we will define our differential lengths, differential areas, and then last, the differential volume. So we're looking at our differential volume. And the first differential length we'll look at is along this edge. This is in the row direction in cylindrical coordinates. So differential length is a vector. It has a magnitude and direction. The magnitude is our differential d rho, and the direction is our unit vector in the rho direction. Our next differential length is along this bottom outer edge of our differential volume, and this is a little bit different. It still is a vector. It has a magnitude and direction. The magnitude in this phi direction is actually rho d phi. So that's the magnitude. And of course, the direction is unit vector a phi. Now we might ask, why is this rho term here? Why isn't it just simply d phi? Well, imagine as we work outward, this differential volume, this differential length will get larger as we work outward, as rho increases. So we have to include the rho here to account for that. The last edge, well, this is the same that we had in Cartesian coordinates. It's a vector. Its magnitude is our differential dz, and the direction is in the z direction. So in one picture here, we have all three of our differential lengths for cylindrical coordinates. Now we can move on to our differential areas. Differential area is also a vector quantity it has a magnitude and phase. The magnitude is just the area of a face of our differential volume, and the direction is perpendicular to that surface. So let's think about this outer surface here. We had a differential length along this edge as rho d phi. We had a differential length working vertically of dz. So the area of this outer face is rho d phi dz. And the direction perpendicular to that surface is in the row direction. So we have the unit vector a row. That is our first differential surface. Let's move on to the second. And I apologize, it's sort of hidden. And the reason we had to draw it on the backside instead of here is so we could draw the vector outward because that really is the positive direction. So we can just imagine that other face being uh, colored red. So what is the area of that face. Well, we have this length is d rho. We have this vertical length is dz. So that makes the differential area d rho times dz, the magnitude part of that. And the direction is in the phi direction. So we have a unit vector a phi. Our last differential area is on this top surface. So the length of this side is d rho, and the length of this side is rho d phi. So that makes the overall magnitude of the surface rho d rho d phi. And the direction is perpendicular to that. It's in the z direction. So the direction we have this unit vector in the z direction. So in one picture here, we have all three differential surfaces defined around this differential volume in cylindrical coordinates. Last, we do our differential volume. We live in a three-dimensional world, so this is purely a scalar quantity. And it's the product of the lengths of the three edges. So we have our d rho, we have our dz, and then we have the rho d phi.
So if we multiply all those together to get overall volume, it's rho, d rho, d phi, dz. Spherical coordinates. We'll repeat exactly what we did for Cartesian and cylindrical coordinates, but now in spherical coordinates. So we're showing our spherical coordinate system. We've identified a differential volume in spherical coordinates. And the first thing we'll do is list the three differential lengths at the, around the edges of that volume. So the first one here is in the R direction. Differential length is a vector. It has a magnitude and direction. What is the magnitude? It's our differential dr. And what's the direction? It's our unit vector in the r direction. So there's dr in the ar direction along this edge of our differential volume. Let's move on to the second differential length. And in this case, it's this top edge along the differential volume. So it's a differential length, it's a vector quantity, it has a magnitude and direction. What is the magnitude? In this case, it's r sine theta d phi. That's the magnitude of the length. And it's in the phi direction. So the phi direction, that's the same as our cylindrical coordinate phi. And so why the r and sine theta? Well, we can imagine as r increases, as this differential volume moves outward, this length will get longer and longer. So the r needs to be there. Likewise, as we work downward, as theta increases, this length will also increase. And it does that in proportion to sine theta. So both of those terms have to appear. Now our last differential length along this edge that I'm highlighting with the laser pointer. It has a magnitude and a direction. Its magnitude is r d theta. And the r appears there again, because as we move outward, this length has to increase. And so it's increasing in proportion to r. And the direction of this edge is in the theta direction, which is sort of in the direction rotating down from the z axis. So we have an r d theta in the theta direction. So in one picture here, we have all of the differential lengths in spherical coordinates. We move on to the differential areas. So let's look at this top face. Differential area is a vector. It has a magnitude and a direction. The magnitude is the actual area of this face, and the direction is in a direction perpendicular to that face. So the area, we have this edge, which the length of that edge is r d theta. We have a second edge, and we saw that the length here is r sine theta d phi. That makes the area r squared times sine theta times d theta times d phi. And the direction perpendicular to that surface is in the r direction. So we'll use a unit vector in the r direction. That is our first differential area. We now move on to the theta direction. So we have our surface on the underneath here. And so the length of this first side is dr. The length of this side, which we talked about on the, the previous differential area was r sine theta d phi. So that makes the area of this face underneath the product of these two. So we end up with r sine theta dr d phi. And the direction perpendicular to that, that is in the theta direction. So we have our unit vector a theta. And the last differential surface is on the face that's hidden here that we can't see, but we had to draw that face because our vector needs to point outward in the positive phi direction. But we have the length of this edge, that's r d theta, and we have the length of this edge, which is dr, so the area is the product of those two, or r dr d theta. And the direction is the positive phi direction, so we use our unit vector a phi. 
So in one picture here, we have all three differential areas for spherical coordinates. And last, we have our differential volume, which is the product of the length of all three sides. So we have an R d theta, we have a dr, and we have an R sine theta d phi. So we multiply all that together, we get an R squared sine theta dr d theta d phi, and that is our differential volume in spherical coordinates.